Hello everyone and welcome back to another furniture flipping video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in this video I will be giving this 1970s credenza a modern and sleek update. So let's jump straight into this one and get our hands dirty. First thing I like to do is remove the drawers and number them to be sure they go back into the right slots because over time things tend to wear themselves into specific ways that only fit well in its original position. Next I like to clean all the areas with a degreaser. I'm using TSP to give it a good wipe down, but once finished with this bottle, I will be trying something new due to it being a two step cleaner. Once you apply the TSP I found that it leaves a bit of a tacky filling and needs to be cleaned with water after, so I'll be trying something new in the future. I'm removing the doors to make it easier to paint both sides as well as remove all the hardware because I decided to swap them all out for some more modern handles. These decorative plates were held on by the knob as well as these two small nails and removing them weren't too hard at all. I'm going to paint the body so a light scuff with 150 grit sandpaper is enough to create a rough enough surface for the primer to stick to. Because the surface is quite large, I like to work in sections to ensure I don't miss any areas. I plan on staining the face, so I'm sanding it down to bare wood working through different grits of sandpaper starting with 80 grit, moving to 150 grit, and then finally finishing with 220 grit to get rid of any swirl marks that 80 grit sandpaper tends to leave behind. After sanding, it's a good idea to give it a light wipe down with water and a lint free cloth before trying to apply primer or paint to any project. Earlier in the video I said I was going to prep the top so that I can paint it, but in the middle of the project I changed the vision I had for this piece and decided to save the top and just strip it down to bare wood in order to sustain it. I'm using Clean Strip Premium Stripper and this stuff truly does work well. It's got a gel-like texture to it and the smell is pretty strong, so when using it, definitely wear a respirator and keep the area well ventilated. This product works in about 15 to 30 minutes and you can go ahead and start scraping it off and you can apply it using a brush or even a piece of cloth. One thing I noticed while scraping this finish off is that it was tacky and a bit like slime. Typically it comes off more solid and I believe this is because the finish had already been sanded and wasn't very thick to begin with. After removing all the finish, I wipe the entire top down with clean strips, mineral spirits to remove any residue left behind and get it prepped to be sanded down. So as before, I start with an 80 grit piece of sandpaper and work my way through 150 and finally finish with 220 grit in order to remove the rest of the finish as well as any spiral sand marks left behind from that 80 grit sandpaper. Here I'm just using a bit of water and a microfiber towel to remove all the dust in order to get it ready for stain. I 
I always like to use an oil-based wood conditioner before applying stain just to avoid any blotching or discoloration that can sometimes occur when staining bare wood. The color I'm using is red mahogany and it's an oil based stain made by Verithane. I like to apply immediately after the wood conditioner because if you let it dry too long the wood won't soak up any stain very well and you may have to sand it back down if you want to get it to go darker. For the drawers, I decided to paint them so I'm just giving them a quick scuff sand with 150 grit sandpaper in order to prep them for primer. I use DAP wood filler to fill any deep scratches or gouges because after painting, these imperfections will stand out and won't look very good. Also, this dresser was in pretty rough condition to start with, having a lot of scratches when I got it. I'm using my electric sander as well as hand sanding to smooth out any of the wood filler, but be careful not to sand down too much because then you remove all the wood filler. Bare Premium Paint and Primer in one in a limousine leather color, it's uh, black satin and I decided just to skip using primer due to it already being built in and being a dark color. Typically I will use primer just for extra coverage but I wanted to see how it would turn out just using the paint by itself. I mix the paint with around 10 to 20% water so that I can spray it using my HVLP spray gun. Without the water, the paint will have a very tough time making it through the spray gun and will come out as a very fine mist. I like to use these disposable paint filters while filling my sprayer to keep particles from clogging the gun. When using the same paint can, the dry paint tends to find a way back into the paint, so it's a good idea to use them. I didn't get a lot of footage on the paint process, but typically I will do about 2-3 to three coats of paint with light sanding in between using 400 grit sandpaper. Sanding in between each coat gives the paint something to adhere to and creates a stronger bond. I always like to use polyurethane in a satin finish for extra durability. I tint the clear coat with a bit of black paint in order to reduce any fogginess or streaking. I also sprayed it over the stained wood to darken it a bit. I had never tried this before but I am very happy with the results that I got.
Same thing with the paint process, I'll do about two to three coats of the clear with light scuff sanding in between with 400 grit sandpaper just to give it a nice smooth finish in the end. This has to be my favorite part, it's putting this beautiful piece back together and installing all the hardware, that way we can see what this finished product looks like. I'm absolutely thrilled with the results of this flip. Now let's talk about the numbers and what I have into this piece and what I sold it for. So I purchased it originally for $50 from Craigslist and had most of the material already aside from the hardware which cost me around $40 and that puts me at about a total investment of $90. I had it sit for about a week and I sold it at its full asking price of $550 netting me a profit of $460. As always, thank you so much for sticking with me on this one and I can't wait to see you on the next one.